Hi everybody and welcome back. This is Tristan from YouTube. Hi everybody and welcome back. This is Tristan from UTSEO.ninja and today I want to share with you five of my favorite tips and tricks for working with Weebly. Number one, apps. I think that one of the things that drives people to systems like WordPress is the number of plugins or apps that are available, which add new features and new functions to your website. Well, Weebly actually has a ton of apps as well. I use a couple of these to promote some of my paper lead sites and my client sites. Some of the cooler ones are live chat, which will let you actually talk to visitors on your website. Site booster, which is really good for taking care of all of your local listings if you have a local business and job form, which is really great. Again, it's for communicating with your clients. They can fill out these forms. You get an email with all the information. It's pretty cool. I have used all three and I have been very happy with them. Number two, Adobe Spark. You guys may have noticed that I've been playing around with Adobe Spark posts and videos lately, and I have really enjoyed using them for my Weebly sites. With your Spark videos, you can easily create professional looking videos for everything and they're free and you can use them to show off your products or your services to review an affiliate or whatever. I have done everything from political campaign commercials for Kylo Ren to proclaiming myself the best SEO in the universe. You can either embed these videos to your site directly from Adobe or from YouTube, or you can download them to your computer and then upload them to your site. And if you need fancy looking graphics, check out Adobe Spark posts. The program is designed to make stuff for like social media posts, but it works really, really well for websites. And it's especially helpful if you want to create a consistent image feel or brand across different internet properties. So like your Facebook page, your Instagram page, your website, your YouTube and everything else. This tool is completely free. It's completely open to the public. I really recommend it. And I have a few tutorials on how to use it. If you guys want to check those out. Number three, YouTube video blogs. I don't know why I talk like that. Um, so a lot of the people that I talk to here on this channel are mostly looking for one of three things. They're either looking for a simple website for their own business, they're looking for a site to use for affiliate marketing, or they're looking for a place to host their YouTube videos. I think we've covered the first two in pretty great detail. I mean, I have like 60 videos on this channel, as well as a ton of example sites that I built over the last year or so, so I mean, it's kind of all there. But hosting YouTube videos is not something I talk about quite as much. Now just for the record, I do host most of my videos on a couple of different sites, depending on the content and the user for those sites. So for example, I have a blog where I rant about video game translation, and I try to share some helpful tips for new translators that are trying to get established. So I will post my Weebly tutorials there, and I'll also post things like my MailChimp tutorials, and I have a couple of old product and service reviews that I've done for things like FreshBooks. Doing this lets me create more generally, you know, universally helpful content here on the channel, and then I can dive into industry-specific detail on my blog page. Not only that, but if your site has decent metrics, it can even help you rank your videos higher in YouTube and in Google. Just be careful because doing that kind of stuff can actually trigger the unnatural backlink penalties and then you won't rank for anything. Number four, IFTTT. Now the biggest deterrent for me to post more of my videos like I explained in number three is simply that it requires a lot of time to research, plan, record, edit, optimize, upload, and then promote each one of these videos. So adding any sort of extra steps like embedding them in the blogs, or anything like that, it just doesn't seem very attractive to me. And that's taking into consideration that I only upload like once a week. But just to give you an idea, I started working on this video four days ago. I spent the day today writing out the script, planning out what footage I would use, which tips I would share out of my vast ocean of Weebly knowledge. And then I get to record it, which takes two or three times longer than the actual video does, edit it, which is always a headache. But with IFTTT, which is short for if this, then that, you can actually connect your YouTube channel to your Weebly blog so that it automatically shares your latest videos to your blog posts. You can even set this up to capture the title and descriptions of your videos and IFTTT is free. You can also use this to share stuff to your social media accounts like Facebook, Twitter, or whatever. It's pretty cool. I'm actually gonna be sharing some of my favorite recipes for IFTTT in the description. All you gotta do is click on them and fill out the information. You'll probably need to create an account first and then it just automatically sets everything up. So that's really, really cool. So what I have mine programmed to do is it will actually take my videos, it will create a blog post with the title of my video as the title of the blog post, it will add in all my description, a link to my video, and it will also embed the video all at the same time, and it's all done automatically. So in fact, after this video is uploaded, you guys will be able to see this on my blog, which is pretty cool. Number five, 
getting your Weebly page for free. Okay, this isn't something that I've mentioned in the past, mostly because I keep hoping that Weebly will actually reach out to me at some point and offer me a better affiliate deal, but so they haven't, and so I'm gonna go ahead and explain how to do this and how you can get your Weebly sites for free. There are a couple of drawbacks to this, uh, mostly that every time you want to make any changes to your website, you actually have to go back and repeat this process. It's not a huge deal, so like especially if your site's gonna be pretty static, you're not gonna be changing anything, but if you're making like daily changes to the site, it's easier to just keep it on Weebly. The other thing is uh, most of the tips and tricks that I just shared won't work after this, but um, it's free, so this is how it works. If you go to your settings tab and select the uh, website archive option and give it your email address they will actually send you the entire website and it's free now it still has their branding all over the place but if you have any way to edit HTML like a notepad uh, like the program notepad or I personally use Dreamweaver then you can remove all their branding and leave your own stuff in its place and then all you have to do is upload those files to your hosting provider or your server and you're set I personally use a program called FileZilla to do this now, I'm actually going to do a full tutorial on how to do this simply because I want to keep this video short. But of course, if you subscribe to the channel, you'll get a notification once it's live and you'll see it in your subscription feed and everything else. Now, the one caveat to this is that you do need to have your own server or hosting provider and you also need to have your own domain. Now, this can be like a private server or you can purchase something from HostGator or Namecheap. I have coupons for both those guys in the description if you guys want to give them a shot. And again, I'm going to show you guys how to do this step by step in the next video. But if you guys are comfortable doing this kind of stuff already, and you know you're just looking for the way to do it and that's how the other interesting thing to note is that this also bypasses the no index settings that weebly has set on their subdomains so that means that you can actually get these sites to rank and index in google which is pretty cool now weebly does say that the sites are still getting indexed and everything else but i haven't noticed any of my free pages actually getting indexed and that's after submitting them through like uh, you know, the google webmaster tools and things like that so we'll get into that a little bit more in the next video so those are my five tips and tricks for using Weebly. Again, I think it's a really good platform, um, especially if you have like a small business or if you're just trying to get like a blog or something like that out there. I think it's really, really cool. It's really easy to use and it's actually really cheap compared to some of the other options out there. Now, as far as a larger business, you're probably gonna outgrow this pretty quickly. I would use this kind of as a temporary thing, you know, get like a coming soon up on there or something like that. Or if you plan to expand in the future, again, that's something that you might want to keep in mind. Just because Weebly is really cool, but it does have a lot of limitations. And those are limitations that you can overcome with something like, uh, we use Adobe Muse, for example, which is a similar tool, but it's a lot more robust, it's a lot more expensive, and it has a lot more options behind it. We can do a lot more with that than we can with Weebly, for example. And if you want to go with something that's even simpler, you can go with something like Wix. Now, Wix has had a lot of problems in the past as far as like search engine optimization, things like that. It's They've been working really hard to improve and fix those different issues. And I think that it's a viable option now if you're going for something that's a little bit more um, design focused. So if you want like a very specific look to the site, that might be a better option for you. However, it does have fewer resources and you don't have access to the HTML or, you know, like what we're doing here where you can actually take the website off of Weebly and upload it onto your own server. That's absolutely impossible with Wix. And there's a whole list of reasons for that. But that being said, I do think that Wix is starting to become viable again. And so you guys can expect to see some more Wix content coming out in the not too distant future. Um, again, if you guys would like to keep up to date on these different things that I'm doing here on the channel, all you gotta do is push the big red subscribe button and that will do one of two things. It will either put me in your subscription feed, actually it'll always do that, and then it could also send you guys an email notification whenever I upload something new. Uh, and you can tell Google specifically that you want it to do that. You just have to click on the name and then something like get notifications or something like that. And then Google will send you an email every time I upload something, which is like once a week. Anyways. Um, that'll do it for me though. My name is Tristan from Ninja. I hope you guys have found these tips to be helpful and handy as I have in the past. I will see you guys in the next video.